Life inside the world's largest 13 billion aircraft carrier. As the world's largest aircraft carrier in the world's dominant Navy, the USS Gerald R. Ford is enormous. The aircraft carrier was built in eight years, many more years to test, and is gigantic enough to tower over the largest buildings in a plethora of big towns. Named after the 38th President of the United States, Gerald Ford is the leading vessel of the U.S. Navy. It is over 1,000 feet vast, or nearly three American football fields in length, and approximately 250 feet high. Encompassed in that huge space, the aircraft carrier also has a whopping 25 decks. The massive ship can house more than 4,500 people and support over 75 aircraft. It's powered by two nuclear reactors, is fully laden, and weighs in at over 100,000 tons. That makes it the largest warship ever erected. The total building value is estimated at over $17 billion, including $5 billion exhausted on research alone. After many delays, it came in at 22% over the calculated budget. The establishment began in 2009 and was finished and finally delivered to the Navy in late 2017, after the ship was officially commissioned by Donald Trump. Gerald Ford himself died during the period of development, so while the title was already in place, Ford was never able to see the handiwork. The ship's main purpose, of course, is to supply a launch base for those 75 aircraft. Inside the ship is a huge hangar, where aircraft are stationed when they're not on deck or on missions. Inside the hangar, there's also a collection of weaponry and several immense lifts devised to move the weaponry from storage locations to the aircraft, ready to be armed. You might be familiar with videos of the intense-looking takeoffs and landings that military aircraft undertake from large aircraft carriers. The Gerald R. Ford's deck is the longest on offer for these audacious pilots, but they still have to launch and land their jets on just under 1,100 feet of deck, all with a fierce overhanging drop-off into the ocean. The aircraft is managed from a bubble, more formally an integrated catapult control system through which the officers assemble the high-paced catapult-assisted takeoffs. In the tower, powerful computers assist in the arrangement of aircraft on deck. Development and technology means that 25% more aircraft can be launched daily by 25% lower crew members than would be necessitated on the Nimitz model of warships that anticipated the Gerald Ford. In the long term, it's assumed that the lessened crew number required will help balance out the high cost of the new ship. The Ford's electromagnetic launch system also weighs less, occupies less space, and necessitates lower maintenance than the steam-powered catapults that predated it. The lessened strain is presumed to benefit the aircrafts themselves, and technical adjustments will mean more various types of aircraft can be launched. The technology did cause some construction delays and continued to give rise to issues, but had Navy officers gushing. She is truly a technological marvel, Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Jonathan Greenert has said. She will carry unmanned aircraft, joint strike fighters, and she will deploy lasers. Once planes land, there are more than 40 different fueling stations to assist them getting back off the deck. Officers still have an approach to the old way of doing things, an Ouija board model. In Ford's case, the sailors gather autographs of famous visitors, including presidents, on currency, and also retain these on their Ouija board. On the side of the deck, chutes are supplied for offloading any weapons that might be misfired, a legacy precaution after an incident in the 60s with a weaponry debacle caused a fire and over a hundred deaths aboard the USS Forrestal. Of course, the different types of aircraft aren't the only weaponry on offer to the carrier. To shield its decks, the ship boasts many Sea Sparrows, short-range anti-aircraft and anti-missile weapons. 
The ship also features ram weapons and lightweight surface-to-air options that can be carried around the deck. The broader control center is, of course, the bridge, from which the twin nuclear engines can be employed to power the enormous ship to speeds of over 30 knots. As you can probably visualize, at 100,000 tons, it takes quite a lot to halt. After the core functions of the ship are normally managed digitally, there is an actual physical steering wheel as a backup. Both paper and digital systems are utilized to navigate, is reported to almost drive itself. The changes from prior ships are so significant that in the early days of testing, Ford's crew divulged that they were essentially working out guidelines for how to sail as they worked. Carrying the slogan, Integrity at the Helm, the Gerald R. Ford naturally characterized a lot of military hardware, but the ship is also designed to give a modest level of comfort for the thousands of people who might call it home for prolonged periods. The Ford is an advanced carrier, however, and so has gender-neutral toilets. While most of those on board are usually men, that means no urinals on the whole ship. This is designed to give the ship flexibility because there aren't any berthing areas that are dedicated to one sex or the other. Operation Specialist First Class Kaylee Motzenbacher reported to Navy Times. Other modern adaptations include USB ports for phone charging, energy efficient light bulbs, fewer people in a cabin, large gym areas, and enhanced air conditioning. The space has enabled distinct sleeping and resting areas. Crewmen are also said to be fascinated with shorter queues for food, connected with the ship's layout and developments in their berths. Flat screen TVs with on-demand TV, boxing facilities, a chapel, and a basketball court are a few of the other features. Plush conference rooms include polished tables and ceremonial flags while the captain's cabin is home to lots of Gerald Ford memorabilia. Unfortunately, the ship is yet to be completely operational due to teething issues. A report in early 2021 indicating that the ship was facing a launch failure of its aircraft every 181 attempts, well short of the once every 4,166 needed. It's not yet clear how these problems are going to be solved the latest indications are that the ship might be deployed sometime in 2022.